In this lecture, we will continue to talk about variables and data type and see what happens when we change the value of variables and also what happened to the data types. So this is how we left our code after the last lecture, but I don't want this code to get in my way right now. So I could just go ahead and delete it, but what I'm going to do is something very common in programming and that's commenting, commenting out the code. So in JavaScript we have two ways of writing comments and the single line comment is just slash slash like this and now we can uh, for example describe what this code is about and we can say lecture variables and the second way of writing comments is multi-line comments which is like this so we first open the comment section and then at the end we have to close it like this. So now all this code is commented and if we continue writing something here it will not be a, a comment. For example like this. So you see this part is now gray and this continues uh, as regular code. So commenting is something useful first to describe our code and second to take out parts of the code that we don't uh, want anymore but that we also don't want to delete which is the case here. So if we now refresh the browser all of this should be gone because this part of the code here is not working. So let's see that. Alright, so let's continue with variables. So I'm actually going to add another comment here and describe what we're going to do. Lecture variables 2. So just to continue the variable lecture. Some space here. Okay, now I want to show you what happens when we mix together uh, strings and numbers. So let's get back our uh, variables that we had before. So I'm sure you know how to do that without even looking at the code from last lecture. So var name and the age. So let's print these two together in the console console.log and the way we do this in JavaScript is with the plus sign. So name plus h. So in JavaScript the plus is not only to add numbers but we can also add numbers and strings together. So let's see what happens when we do that. So I just refresh the browser and we see this is a string which now has the string that we had before, John, and the 26 also as a string. So all of this is now a string. So why does it happen? So why does JavaScript transform our number to a string? And this is something called type coercion. So one of the things that dynamic typing that we just talked before in the last lecture uh, does is that JavaScript automatically converts uh, this number to a string. And this happens with other uh, data types as well. So when we have different data types and we mix them together, JavaScript tries to automatically figure out which of the variables it has to convert and then converts them all to the same data type. So once again, this is called type coercion and it just means that JavaScript converts some data types to another on the fly when it needs it. And of course, this doesn't always happen. So if we would just write console.log, h plus h then it will simply add these numbers and it would be not a string but a number and in the console we see this with this blue color so the blue uh, outputs are always numbers and the black ones here like this this is a string all right so let's now see another thing that we can do uh, with javascript variable declarations which is that we can just declare a variable and not define its value immediately and we can even define more than one variable uh, at a single line. And it goes like this. So we can define the person's job or John's job and uh, create also a variable to define if he's married or not. So we could call this one is married. And that's just it. So we have two variables created, but we didn't assign them a value yet. And I'm sure that you remember from the last lecture 
what these values are uh, assigned when they don't have a value yet. Do you remember that? So let's check it out. Console.log job. So try to guess what happens now in the output of this. All right, undefined. So here it is. So remember that undefined is what gets assigned to a variable uh, before its value is actually uh, declared. And we can declare the value later. So let's do that right now. And when the variable is already declared, uh, then we don't have to write var again, because the var keyword is only when we first declare the variable. So now we just have to write job. And then we can say something like teacher. And we can also define his married status, let's say. So let's married. So now I'm going to use this one as a Boolean. So remember, Boolean is a data type which can only accept true or false values. So let's say that um, John is not married yet. So let's log all of this to the console like we did before. So console.log. So we want the name. So we want to form a sentence now. So we need empty space. So as uh, just a space. And in order to do that, we just write an, an empty string. An empty string, of course, with a space. So now plus age plus an empty space again, plus job plus an empty space. Let me scroll down here, some more space. And then plus is married. So let's see what happens when we run this one. Okay, so once again, we have type coercion here at work, right? Because all of this is now a string. And this one, so this is the is married variable. And this 26 is the age variable. And this one is a Boolean, as you know, and this one is a number. And all of this was coerced or converted to a string. So type coercion did its work uh, again and converted all of this to a, to a string. So let's just make this a little bit more, more beautiful, the sentence. So John is a, in this case, 26 uh, years old teacher, right? Then we can ask a question, is he married? And then we just add a final period here. So if we reload this now, we have an error. Okay, or an uncaught syntax error. And this is great. So we have our first bug here. It wasn't on purpose, but it's great. So now we can uh, try to first debug this, this little error. So what does the JavaScript console tell us? It says there's a missing parentheses after the argument list. This usually isn't very useful. Uh, so we just have to figure out what's wrong here. So we have variable and then plus and then a sign and then a string plus and then a variable plus a string and plus a variable and so on and so on. But what I see here is that here we don't have the plus. So we have a variable and then just the string right after it. So we need this plus operator here in order to make the syntax correct. So in order to have correct code. So if we now refresh this, it should work. All right, and now we have a beautiful sentence here. So John is a 26 year old teacher. Is he married? False. Okay, so up until this point, all we did was define variables or declare variables and then just use it. But what we didn't do so far was to actually change the value of variables. And of course, that's something we can do and uh, we do it very usually and it's one of the important aspects of, of variables. And changing the value of a variable is called variable mutation. So we can, for example, change the age to a string now, 36, for example. And we can also change the job to something else like driver. So notice that once again, 
we didn't use the var keyword here because as you know the var keyword is only to declare the variables in the first time it's the same thing as here so we declared the variables here but didn't define a value for them and then did it here but we didn't use the var keyword again and that's the same thing as we did down here so let's now just copy this piece of code here to see what happens with the output so let's refresh this once again and now this is different let me actually get rid of these three um, outputs here and what I can do once again instead of deleting it uh, so that I can give you the code later I can just comment it out like this and like this and like this and if I now refresh this I will only have these two outputs that I want so note that the first one is still the same that we had before so John is 26 years old is he married false so this is comes from this uh, line of code here and then we changed some of the variables we mutated these variables and now the sentence is different it's John is a 36 years old driver and then the rest is the same what this means is that these changes only take effect in our code after we did these changes so in the line before our changes with which is up here we still see the old values so the age and the job were first defined here and then we used them in this line and read their values and printed them to the console and then we changed their values and we printed them again and then they were different so what this means is that our code is read as a sequence from up here all the way down so it's a sequence of instructions and we will learn a whole lot more about this uh, later in the course but for now just know that our code is read in a sequence of, of instructions from line to line and that's the reason why the changes that we did here are only reflected in the lines after the changes and not in the lines before the changes that would be here okay just one more thing that I want to uh, quickly show you about variables is something similar to console log but instead of writing to the console we want to get data from the from the console and once again these are not really meant to be used in production so in the final application but just uh, when we are debugging some code or when we are doing simple examples like this so if we want to get data from the console then we just have to define a variable let's say we want to get the last name and then we use prompt and then we have a string so in this case let's say what is the last name so let's see what happens all right so now we get this uh, pop-up window here with the string that we defined what is the last name and now we can put here something like Smith and of course nothing happens because we didn't do anything with the variable but if we do it like this like we already know then you can expect what's going to happen so let's say Smith All right then down here we have the output of the variable that we just defined so these are two functions that we can use for the console and there's actually one more which is simply the alert win window which is similar to the prompt but it doesn't uh, ask a question so all we have to do is to use alert and then let me just copy this from here so I don't have to write it all over again so this will also basically print a value but not to the console but to its own pop-up window but first we have uh, this one here from this prompt instruction so this doesn't really matter Smith and now we have one more bug here because it's not altered it's of course alert all right so let's comment out this one so it doesn't get in our way and this one as well all right so now we have it John is a 36 year old driver is he married false so this is the alert window that I was talking about 
which I'm sure you have actually seen on some websites. So some websites just use this, but I think it's really more intended to debugging or to, to test something in an early stage of a development. Okay, so these are the basics of variables and data type and variable mutation. And so in the next lecture, we're going to move on to operators and see some details about operators like the plus operator that you already saw. And we're going to see some more about this. Okay, so see you there.